So we got into a game on PBE recently that was, um, I don't know if it was actually Dong Hwap in it, but it had somebody called Dong Hwap in it. And I was like, ah, that could be him. And I was looking through his videos. Iron accounts, generally speaking, tend to be more expensive than like master tier accounts. And obviously I don't condone any of this, right? But getting like a hand deranked League of Legends account can be very expensive. Five, $500, man. 500 bucks, 450 dollars, 350 dollars, and that's with like not a lot of skins on them. But it's a weird black market for them because of the fact that like it's it, 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 these are the accounts that people like to smurf on and like have easy games that are basically unlosable because they're very good at the game. So I kind of wanted to watch this video about why Iron Evil accounts are so expensive because it is like a kind of interesting whole thing. Like, and I and I don't tend to interact at all, if ever with um the black market community of like how of like oh of like all these accounts selling things i've never bought an account in my life i don't really i don't really endorse it but dong Hop's video is always is, is always like top-notch stuff and um yeah so subscribe to him as well oh my finger slipped just do that also give him one of them oh my finger slipped and then while you're at it you can subscribe to this channel and like this channel as well thank you very much appreciate it rank it's the single most important thing to a league of legends player Climbing ranks isn't just a point of pride and achievement anymore. If you climb high enough and an organization notices you, you could have a full-time job playing League of Legends. <clears throat> People do all kinds of things to improve their rank for different reasons. From taking Ritalin to improve their concentration, to paying others thousands of dollars to ELO boost them, whether it's for ego or- So like, weird story, I remember talking to a booster who's like pretty well known and like actually is a streamer who's like vaguely popular. I think quite popular at this point and this was like years ago uh and i, I found out something very in interesting about like how much so uh, like how much he made and who his clientele was because i was always curious like who is it that buys these boosts and i, I thought i'd ask him and have a conversation with him and he told me i think at the time uh one getting one single win in challenger being boosted and i don't, I don't know why you would buy boosts in challenger but some people still do it is like three to six hundred dollars per win not even like a certain amount of LP, like one win, you have to pay that. If you want a one win in challenger, you pay that person a certain amount, like that much money. And I asked, like, who's the kind of person that would buy this? And he's this person was from NA, of course. And it, and yeah, like John just said in the chat, it's like rich Chinese students studying in North America. Uh, and he said, like, the main re and I, I shit you not, I kid you not, the reason why they're doing it is so they can flex to their friends back home. Because obviously, like, in, in the East, I mean, maybe we don't experience it necessarily as much in the West. Like, if you're from Europe or, like, Australia or, uh, like, North America or South America or whatever, yeah, you might have a lot of friends that play League of Legends because you are you are with your friends and your friends all like the same games. But in, like, China and, like, Korea and, like, stuff like that, the game is, like, it is way bigger. It made a way bigger cultural impact than it has here. So, like, rank matters. People care about their rank way more than they do here and like yeah these kids will shell out like thousands of bucks when they come over any to be like yeah look how easy this server is just got like challenger on any <laughs> within like three weeks of coming here to study or self-improvement people are willing to go to just about any length to gain more elo iron is the lowest rank in league of legends and did you know that iron accounts are actually worth hundreds of dollars. Diamond is an ELO which accounts for the top 2% of League of Legends players, and those accounts are sold on average for about $60. But an Iron account can be sold for up to $500. Why are Iron accounts so expensive? How do you make an Iron account, and how do you get one? Today, we explore the world of ELO losers, and why it's actually so hard to get into Iron. This is League of Documentary. Because it's hard to de-rank so hard that you go into Iron without actually trolling and inting the game. I would say that's my guess. Because, like, you actually have to be, like, intentionally running it down in some of these games. Like, let's say, like, 40% of the games you lose because you have no impact in and 40% that you win because you have no impact in. Like, man, I don't know what that number is. Like, uh, in Iron, it's, it must be insane. Let's first understand why Iron accounts are so expensive. In order to do that, we have to look at the prices of other accounts. Something like this is only worth as much as somebody is willing to pay for it. Let's assume the value of these accounts is based solely off of the rank and nothing else. 
There are no special skins. There's not a massive amount of blue essence, so you can buy whatever champion you want. There are only ranks on these accounts. Bronze and silver accounts generally sell for $5 to $20. Generally speaking, these are the easiest to create. All you have to do is use any number of 100 programs, run them, and they'll do everything for you. These bots automate the entire process, from creating the accounts themselves to maxing out their levels. You just essentially have to turn them on and they'll do everything else for you. Gold accounts are a bit more tricky, since they usually have to be hand leveled. When a new League of Legends account is playing up to level 30, if that account is doing extremely well in normals, then the system will, generally speaking, give them a very high MMR. Next up is yep. Platinum and Diamond. Although yep. Plat represents the upper 15% of the League of Legends player base, it's still relatively easy to create one. Rank is honestly not a good representation of skill. As pro players say, the difference between a Diamond 4 player and a Master Tier player is that of a Bronze player and a Diamond player. The higher you go, the harder it is to climb. The gap between professional players and a good solo queue player can be massive. At any given time, there can be over 2,000 players in Diamond 1 Plus. They can easily reach a win rate of over 70% from a fresh account all the way up to Diamond. Because it's just so easy to create an account with these ranks, the average Diamond account only sells for around $60 to $100. You could spend years and never hit diamond, or work at McDonald's for a day and just buy a diamond account. Now, Master Tier and up is extremely rare. Most accounts sold at Master Tier tend to be from players who decide that they're quitting League of Legends. They usually have a ton of resources on them, special skins, lots of champions, blue essence, which makes it difficult to calculate the value of these accounts in terms of their pure League rank. But if you look at the average cost of boosting an account from Diamond to Masters or Diamond into Grandmasters, we can assume that these accounts can be sold for thousands of dollars. Whether or not somebody actually pays for these accounts is a different story. The high priced Iron account, it's because it's not just a botted account that was used to level up with a bot, lower uh, his elo with another bot, and then it's a high risk account, right? then you can sell it for 20 or 30 and people will buy it. But sometimes you can see an account for 100, for 200. And why? Because this account is hand leveled. It's legitimately someone owned this account and made it manually. Maybe even not intentionally. It's just a new player that played 500 games and then just left the game. And now he has a super rare account, as funny as it is. Man, how good like, would that be if you're, well, I mean, if you're like, man, this game sucks and I suck at it. I'm Iron 4. I hate this game. I can't win a damn game and you find out you've got like one of the rarest accounts in the world that people will pay like three, four hundred dollars for. <laughs> wow! Years of being Iron, in a, like super, super low Iron 4, stuck there, the lowest MMR you can have, and it's rare, not many have this, not many have this kind of elo. so it can get pretty expensive as well. Yeah, it's like throwing away like a Nintendo entertainment system. I'd be like, man, the graphics on this thing suck. And then like a, a, a mint inbox mess being like, I don't know, prob uh, probably probably thousands of dollars at this point, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, pff, I have no idea. Do you think you can make good money being an Iron Force streamer? I would like to hope so. I think you could, yeah. Why not? If you were so bad that people were fascinated by you, why wouldn't they watch you? It's like Kadeem, you know? Expensive as well. In terms of rarity, Iron Four Zero LP has the same number of people as Grandmaster and Challenger. So it's not really surprising as to why these accounts are worth so much. Okay, so what's the most optimal way to hit Iron? The normal games that you play before you hit level 30, which is the level you're allowed to start playing ranked at, those games affect how you're placed into the ranking system. It takes 21,389 EXP to reach level 30 in League of Legends. A 30 minute game win will give you around 204 EXP. A loss will give you roughly 164. Assuming you play 10 games a day with 8 losses and 2 wins, along with the first win of the day mission, you will get roughly 2,120 EXP per day. That will take you about 10 days of continuous losses to hit level 30, which means you will be playing around 100 games to make one account level 30. If we add in queue times and players dodging, we can add another three or five minutes to each game. This means it'll take a person roughly 60 hours of work 
to make one super low ranking fresh level 30 account. Worst of all, you're not actually guaranteed to make this account into iron. It could just be stuck at bronze 4. This is not a very efficient way to make an iron account. What most ELO D boosters do is they purchase an account that's already bronze. That way, each loss is guaranteed to push them closer to iron. Here's the hard part about ELO losing. You're losing a lot of games. And it's not really as simple as just running it down mid. Although you will hear constant stories about how someone was running it down for 100 games and never got banned, the reality of the situation is that the banning system in League of Legends has significantly improved. You don't want to just go 0 and 10 every game, you will get banned for it. My strategy is playing super passively, not inting, not dying. And if my team wins, you need to fix it a little and lose. Right? <laughs> it's a little dirty, but that's what you do. You need to control we do a little losing. Inside the outcome of the game, it does require skill. So if you want to do it like for 100 of games, for 200 games, you have to control the game and try to not make it obvious. Although it will be obvious, even win a game every like seven or eight games. Because if we do a little bit of fixing, row, it's obvious, right? Twiddles so my mustache. Job is losing as fast as possible, but not making it obvious and ban the account because that's all goes to waste. Yes, that's right. There's strategic elo losing. There's actually skill involved Man. when it comes to losing your elo without getting banned. If 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 that's a skill, I'm a goddamn master at it, man. I lose games constantly, and I I don't even know how, bro. Like, <laughs> I think I'd be pretty good at this, actually. <laughs> you have to be pinpoint dog shit. Just enough to lose a lot of games, but not enough to get banned. You have to lose the game in a way that makes it look like your KDA is decent enough so that your team won't actually report you. But at the same time, you have to be able to cause enough damage to your team so that you're able to actually go on a losing streak. If your losing streak is not big enough, then it's not a good efficient use of your time. So how do you do that? The first most important rule to ELO losing is never ever pick jungle. The key to not getting banned is to not rack up a lot of reports. But if you have no impact as a jungler, you are sure to get reported. Even if you have a positive impact as a jungler, you'll probably still get reported. Bot lane is a no-go because you'll have a laning partner that will be scrutinizing everything that you do. Support and AD carry are top lane, huh? Looks like we're looking at top lane. Go anyway, so you don't impact the map as much. Solo lanes are almost always the best way to go. Instead of running it down on the enemy and just feeding him a bunch of kills, what you want to do is you want to play extremely passively and just let the enemy laner farm for free. Then what you do is you pick a champion with a very big flashy engage, something like a Malphite or a Nunu. Remember, this is bronze elo. There's no such thing as meta here. And if it looks like your team has an advantage, what you do is you begin by making really, really shitty engagements and avoid using your critical abilities so that your team is baited into bad fights. <laughs> On average, you should have around a 30% win ratio in order to make sure that you're not suspicious. I, I really like that it's like a step-by-step, -step, like, oh yeah, the so there was like a, a car bomb that went off somewhere. And here's how they made the whole, and then they in detail describe how to construct a car bomb. <laughs> yeah, this guy pulled an RPG out of nowhere. He he constructed it himself. Uh, anyway, here's exactly how he did it. Here's all the tools. It's like a damn art show where it's like, here's what you're gonna need, kids, to make this rocket propelled grenade launcher. <laughs> As ELO losers, you should be trying to maximize the efficiency of your time. At 30%, you have to play around 100 games before you can take a bronze account into Iron 4. So why do people want Iron ELO accounts so much? Smurfing is a pretty big ego boost for a lot of people. If you've been playing a bunch of ranked games and you're tilted off the face of the earth, it's a nice way to bring some confidence back to your play. But why would anyone want to pay hundreds of dollars for an Iron Elo account when they could just simply buy a bronze account at $5? The main purchasers of these super low Elo accounts are what we call the win streak community. This community focuses solely on making it onto the top of the charts on websites like League of Graphs. They mostly go there for the bragging rights to say, I have the highest win rate on Twitch in the world. 
It doesn't matter whether or not your skill actually reflects that. What matters is the fact that you're on this leaderboard and you have this stat. When streamers like Rat IRL had smaller followings, what they would do is they would use something like a 100% win streak stream in order to try and gain more notoriety and publicity. If you want to win 100 games in a row, you obviously can't Jesus. do that Challenger ELO. So in order to be able to achieve this, streamers use something that I like to call Under Iron 4. How much LP you gain is determined by a hidden score called MMR, which stands for matchmaking rating. If your Iron 4 is 0 LP, you can continue losing games in order to artificially tank your MMR further. This way, even if you win games, you're still gaining a very small amount of LP and you still stay in Iron 4. This is how streamers are able to have these ridiculous 150 game win streaks. It's because they've paid someone to lose 300 games first on that same account. If you take a look at League of Graphs on champions like Twitch compared to other normal champions, you can see an obvious trend of what's going on here. But the question is, can you actually make a living being an ELO D booster? It's probably not possible unless you live in a very third world country. Like You can't get too much money from losing accounts. There aren't many people who will just come to you and say, I want this account lowered. There are people like this, but not too much to make it a job. Losing a game sometimes will get you one buck, two bucks per game. And imagine playing for one or two bucks maybe an hour or like for 40 minutes, it can't be a full-time job. I have never met someone who can just lower his elo and make full-time out, out of it. Most people who want to play League of Legends for money tend to be very good at the game because they play so much. They enjoy that feeling of stopping players that are weaker than them. Very few people want to actually play games with the intention to lose. This means that there are generally less ELO D boosters, which in turn drives down the supply of iron accounts, which then in turn drives up the price of iron accounts. In League of Legends, iron accounts are as valuable as real diamonds. Let's say it's like the perfect account, like it's three years from a real iron player that just played for fun. He played like hundreds of games. It's actually iron. It has many champions. It's safe. You have all the information, recovery information, username, password, email, everything. You could probably get a couple hundreds from it. Maybe 200, 300. I, you can probably see some like 500 on the market. I don't know if anyone buys it. I'm confident that people will buy it for two, 300. So if you know someone in Iron 4, let them know how valuable their account is. For they've been able to do something that only 0.2% of the League of Legends population have even able to accomplish. Their playstyle is so unique that normal human beings have to try hard in order to be as dog shit as they are. That's a bad mean. <laughs> oh man. Dude, I, that's a good video. I'm not gonna lie. There's, I, yeah, it's it's so bizarre. It's such a bizarre world, man. But like, also, I guess it's like appealing. So here's the thing: if you're gonna buy an account, would you rather buy an account that you're gonna like? Let's say you're gonna buy a diamond account, just so you can get your ass beat by like a billion people who are better at the game than you, and also like work to get into diamond. Or would you rather buy an iron account for more and then be everyone else's ass? <laughs> kind of makes sense, I guess, when you think about it. <laughs> Still, it's a I, I I don't like the the black market of uh, League of Legends accounts, but like it's still fascinating to me, and uh, yeah, that was a fun video to watch. I really liked it. <laughs>